intro in advance or not intro in advance. Uh -huh. here. Big or small, it doesn't really matter. As long as you understand the basic concept, you should be able to configure any email on any customer location. First thing are a couple of prerequisites. Where is the email server physically located? Is it on site? Or are you using the internet service provider? What is the name or the IP address of the SMTP server? What is the email address and email password? And what is the SMTP port number of that email server? If you need to change the port number to match the email server, the default port number is 25. But if you need to change it, you go on a non image on advance, go to service mode level 2, copier, option, body, SMTP, TX, PN. On the image on advance, go to service mode 2, copier, option, network, SMTP, TX, PN. Change the 25 to whatever number the email server is using. The DNS domain name. If the email server is physically on site, which means customers have their own exchange, Lotus Notes, or group wise, then the DNS domain name under TCP settings is configured without the .com, .edu, .gov, .org, .mail. The only exception to that rule is .local. It needs to either stay there if it's already configured on the machine or add it to it. If the customer does not have their own email server, you need to add the .com, .edu, .gov, .mail to the DNS domain name. But remember, the DNS domain name always follows the email domain name. Basically, what we're going to do now, we're going to connect to our image on advanced copier. We're going to configure it uh, with and without authentication. First thing that we want to do is configure the, the DNS uh, domain name. This customer is using mr-wayne.com, which means that they don't have their own email server. The host name is basically the name of the copy that can stay um, whatever it is, but the, the domain name needs to match the email domain name. So now what we're going to do, we're going to do the bulk of the configuration under the email IFAC section, and we're going to configure it with and without authentication so you can see what's going on. Right now we're going to configure it without authentication because that's the easiest. SMTP RX, that's turned on. POP is turned off. We don't want to check email at the copier. SMTP server. We want to use the IP address rather than the name so the copier doesn't have to resolve the name. It takes a little bit longer to resolve the name and convert it back into IP address. So let's use the IP address um, right away. The email address is basically the email address, the authentication encryption page. Everything is turned off on this page. And that's email without authentication. If your site or your customer does require authentication, we come back to the authentication encryption. We turn that on. The username is basically email address without the at. The password is the email password. Some sites require SSL, which means the port number must change as well. And on this copier, uh, allow SSL, we can either turn that on or off. But if you have a small enough device and they do require SSL and that copy does not have an SSL option, you will not be able to send email using the SSL option on that copier. So that's uh, very important to remember. So let's go back to the main page and let's configure um, email with authentication, which is basically the uh, email password that we just did. And let's say this page doesn't work. You configured it properly. It's not sending email. You're getting a whole bunch of error codes. What we can do is basically turn off authentication on this page, and we're going to basically authenticate on the first page. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to enter the same information, the POP server. Although we're not checking email at the copier, I'll explain in a minute why we're going to um, do it this way. POP address is going to be the same as the email address. And the pop password is basically the email password. And we're going to confirm it. Hit OK. Basically what we're doing here, we're telling the email server, listen, I have all my credentials, I have my email address, I have my email password. I don't want to check email right now because I turn pop off. I just want to send. The email server will look at this credential and say, okay, this person is not 
a relay, he's not trying to use me as relay or spam. I will allow him to send email. Basically what we did here, we already did the authentication, which was on the second page. So um, hopefully this video was very helpful. Enjoy the rest of the day.